Hello, this is Athena Jezik, and I'm back with Psyche Truth, which has been a while. There's much to tell about that, but what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about something that we all experience from time to time, which is pain, and we're going to examine it in a little bit different way. Instead of running for pain meds, we're going to start looking at the structure and finding out if that is contributing to some of our discomfort in life. So I've got Lucy here, who's going to be showing how the body should be structurally supported. And we do run across a lot of problems with our posture, with sitting at the computer, or driving a car, or doing the things that we do. So these little hints that I'm going to give you can help you to think about where your structure is every day and all the time. And eventually the proprioception will take hold and the muscle memory will take hold and you'll be able to structure yourself with a lot better posture and you'll find yourself in less pain. So by starting here and seeing how Lucy is standing, you can see that there's some shoulders. We'll move over to the side in a minute, but the shoulders are a little bit forward. The neck is coming. It looks like computer work is going on. The back is a little more rounded than it, we want it to be. Um, their feet are pretty level. There's not um, a whole lot of problem with the separation of the feet, although the hips seem to be a little bit out of alignment. Just a little. It looks like the hip is dropped back a little bit on the left, on the right hand side. So turning to the side, and this will be correcting. You can see where the roundedness is, where the neck goes, how the the shoulders are dropping a little forward. And the stomach is, is um, it's not as strong as it should be, so it's not supporting the back in the way that it can. There might be a little bit bigger curve right there than necessary. But we'll be working with all of that. So to start out with, seeing the posture like this, over time, as Lucy ages, she's going to be going into this position more and more and hunching down more and more with the... And this is what'll happen. And then there's going to be crimping at the back of the neck. There's going to be a roundedness here. So the lungs aren't going to be able to be open as well. And just a lot of things start happening structurally. It's important to remember that function is going to follow structure. So the better our structure is, as boring as posture might be, it is the, the groundwork for uh, the function to function normally. Now to start with, where we want to start with is right at the very base of the skull. Um, it's where the, the very base of the skull, where you feel the muscles connecting to the skull. That piece of the, of the anatomy needs to be pulled back and then upward. So you can see how her whole body shifted as it goes. At, you can see the, the length of the neck. So at first, that's going to be a little um, uncomfortable because it's a different position. But if the thought and the, uh, the imagery is right here, back and up, what that does is that sets the rest in place for the neck to be straighter and then the shoulders to begin to relax. And as the shoulders relax, they can drop down and they can just relax and float on top of there. The, there's an interesting thing about the rib cage and the shoulder girdle is that at the, if you want to just turn a little bit, right here, there's the sternoclavicular uh, joint, the, where the clavicle connects to the sternum bone. And what happens there is that's where the bones of the shoulder girdle are attached to the main frame of the, of the body. So, by doing, by thinking of that being the attachment point that gives you this angle to lift up and back and hold there and let this relax, and then the shoulders can be on there. Now, think of the rib cage as being oxygen. So there's air inside, and then you're floating in air. So this part of the body should be very floaty feeling because it's just floating here attached there and all the other things are attached by muscles the scapula is muscular it's attaching into the frame that way but if we think now up and back 
letting the shoulders just float on top so there's a spreading of the back and then we can relax through the the chest a little easier and if we're just going to go this far right now um, that even aligns her back a little bit just by picking the floating and you can see the difference in how the structure has changed just in moving the head back and up so that's where we start how does that feel it's a little tense but it feels good <laughs> it's different yeah um, so if you want to just turn the other thing that I want to mention here is when you do the body when you're doing this for the body to straight to change the uh, proprioception and get different muscle memory pattern if you give the body an image in which to to visualize there's a different way that it's going to translate into the body so what I mean by that is when I have taught in the past um, movement I'll ask people to just put their arms out to the side so you can just stick your arms out to the side like hold your arms out to the side so she's got her arms out to the side and um, she's holding them there so just hold the arms out to the side now I'm gonna give an image and I want you to change your arms with the image to see what happens imagine that you're resting your arms on the back of a couch and there it just relaxed it turned and what else is happening that you probably can't see is the only muscles that are working are the muscles that need to hold the arm up so in other words there's um, you can let them down there's um, when we give the image of arm out all the muscles are going to work when we give the image of resting it on the couch the muscles that don't need to be working to hold that arm up are going to relax while the other muscles are taking over when you can get that concept in along with the postural thing uh, what you'll be doing is you'll be able to have very efficient movement you'll have more energy because you're not working so hard to just lift an arm you don't have to use all the muscles you can only use you only need to use the muscles that are needed therefore you're going to use part just part energy to lift that arm so you conserve energy at the same time when your posture is in alignment so there we have the first stage of how to stand with good posture this opens up the cranial system there's no crimping of the cranial base um, the dural tube the muscles there are able to be long, lengthened and long so the neck will have a better possibility of staying out of a lot of neck pain you have the shoulders that are free and floating and they're not going to be held, holding tight like we think we have to hold ourselves up by holding tight shoulders there's so much shoulder tension that's out there that can all open up then arms can begin to move more freely up and down they can just start moving much more freely and then we'll begin to isolate the rib cage as well so that you have free movement of of just the upper body moving in ways that are going to be more comfortable while you're staying in that alignment with the spine and everything proper that way you're grounded better your energy is flowing better and you're functioning internally better what else it does is it's kind of um, it's kind of a psychological thing too because you feel like you're when you're standing like that yeah more open but you also feel like you're more in your power because you're standing straighter when you walk into stores or something and you're standing your postures like that you're presenting yourself completely different as well yeah. so um, that's another fun thing cool. so walk in so now that we have um, gone over briefly what to do I'm gonna break this down so that if you want to participate with it you can stand up and get yourself ready to do that and see how it feels so step one we just gonna to want to get in, you to stand up in your normal posture just however you go and I want you to be aware of the lines of the least resistance do you have more weight on one leg do you have weight on the other leg are they evenly distributed does it feel like the hips are turning at all curving it's up one higher one lower one twisting front one twisting back um, how are the shoulders feeling are they dropping forward is the neck dropping forward um, just notice all of those things in your posture 
and that's where we start that's the palette that we're going to start from so now where we go is we go to the base of the skull and you think of lifting that head back so from the base of the skull only you lift it back and then up and the chin becomes level with the floor horizontal with the floor and the eyes can gaze out so that's where the gaze is when we walk is just like so the shoulders then become relaxed and hang on top of the body being attached right there at the sternoclavicular joint or junction I'm not sure what it is so that's standing uh, relaxing out and just sitting there it's not holding up you don't have to wear your shoulders as earrings you don't have to feel like you have to move forward or back too far and just let them float where they feel comfortable and then that head is in a good position there and this takes a little bit of work to get to but it's really important to get that neck placed right because that's really where everything should start from we are going to be grounding into the feet as well but this is a really important thing to have us be lengthened and longer I think I've grown about a half an inch from paying attention to this particular type of thing okay so there we have it all right so we went through that once so let's try it again go to the normal posture the posture that feels comfortable and just kind of pretend like you're just doing a normal day then and you know pay attention to of how much burden is on your body in other places you probably won't get the contrast of that right away but after the uh, muscle memory begins to kick into the new new structural design you will begin to notice how much stress there is on the body from an out of alignment position so we start with the base of the skull it pulls back and up chin stays horizontal to the floor eye gaze is out shoulders relax just holding right there they relax and it feels like the back kind of spreads open okay try it again back to the old posture uh, and then we'll um, start with the back of the head it goes up back and up shoulders relax Clav uh, chin level with the very good eyes gaze out and then you're attached right there with the uh, shoulder girdle and the rest of the shoulder girdle is relaxed floating on top of that air rib cage suspended in air floated by air so the shoulders should become very free and movable and we'll work more on the shoulders to open those up and let's try it one more time go back to the comfortable posture <laughs> and then begin to move that head back and up you feel it all different and it's very it's becoming more natural yeah chin to the level a little bit more there yeah there you go gaze out and that is beautiful like that shoulders relax and there we go okay so that's opening up the neck that's very important for the neck to be in alignment it's going to feel awkward at, at first for you because it's a different position there the hunching forward has made muscle patterns lengthen where they should need to be shorter now and it's shortened ones that need to be lengthened and so there's going to be some structural changes that go on with these muscles because they're in a different position so that's kind of a hard part to get through but if you the other thing that you're going to notice is that you're going to throughout the day you're going to fall back into the old pattern so every time you catch yourself falling back in the old pattern if you just tell yourself lift the head up and back and get the the chin level if you just tell yourself there the rest is going to automatically come in eventually it will become part of your pattern and you'll be moving in this position more than you are in the hunched position and you'll find that things are just easier okay so now uh, we've got the neck and head in a really good position and it makes her look taller too 
So next, the arms. We want to get the arms to move freely. So if you could just lift your arms in the new position, and then imagine that they're on the back of a couch, so you can just re relax them, and they're going to come forward a little bit more. So just let your arms rest right on my hands, and there you go. So now I'm going to move your shoulders. Don't don't move anything. So the shoulders should begin to move with the arms really freely in this position without any strain, okay? So just lift those, those shoulders up, thinking that you're putting them on the back of a couch or you're resting on something, yeah. And then begin to move your arms forward and backward, keeping this head nice and straight and letting them go and uh, lifting them upward and feel how the shoulders where the tension is in the shoulders and working them that way, good. So that's where we want to go with the arms. So next is the shoulders. So what I want you all to do now is just go back to the old posture and try to lift your arms and see what you're feeling. It probably feels a little difficult to do. So we'll. Bring the head back, up and back. Notice how the shoulders just change by that little position of those little few vertebrae in the neck. And there we go. And each time she does it, it looks she's doing it with a little bit more natural motion. It doesn't look quite as foreign. And then now that your neck is positioned properly, let those arms lift with the idea that you're lifting them to place them in on the back of a couch. You don't have to pull them too far back. Just, yeah, lifting up like you're putting them and let the muscles stay real open and moving them. So the shoulders, that's real good. So her shoulders, our arms are moving with just a lot of fluidity, which is what we want. And she's able to hold that in place. So then your arms can come down. So that's important right there. So you can go in, you can practice that by going up with the arms again. And then if you want, you can drop yourself into the old posture, even with the arms out and just feel how everything changes. And then come back to the good posture and let it set and let the arms just feel like they're floating. They're just floating, floating, floating. And when you can get that concept down, when the body really grabs it and you just suddenly feel it and you know that you got it, what you're going to find is that you're going to have more energy when you move because each time you reach to pick something up, it's just different. The structure is the way it's supposed to be. And we're walking the way we're supposed to be instead of all goofy. So now we have practiced the neck, um, just the little movement of the neck and the, then the relaxing and flotation, if you will, of the shoulders. So what I want you to try to do, if you can, or do it actually, is Every time you catch yourself slouching forward, begin to think up and back, up and back, up and back with the neck. Shoulders relaxed, feeling like they're, they're very fluid, feeling like the back is opened and expanding out like you have wings. And so everything is easy up there at the top of the body. Um, if you keep doing that, if you catch yourself every single time that you start going forward, tell your body to go up and back, eventually what happens is it becomes the norm for you. And then you're going to always have this better posture. Once that posture is in a better position, you're not going to experience the kind of muscle tension for, from stress. You're not going to experience as many headaches, at least the structural headaches that we get. Functional headaches are a little different. Uh, if you're um, just everything is going to change pain levels will go down and then as we continue to work on the rest of the body the hips and the abdomen and the foot placement and heel strike you're going to find that you're going to have less back pain in the low back less hip pain less chances of having sciatic problems and different things like that structure is so important and one thing that very few people realize is that the position of the structure is going to be followed by the function so the better aligned we are, you figure that as soon as her head is straight, 
on top of it, on top of the vertebrae the way it's supposed to be, and then she can relax these neck muscles. You're also going to be opening up the the cranial nerves that are running down through the through the um, the along the dural tube. The cranial nerves, the nerves that go off of the neck, the nerves that just kind of keep running all the way down the spine is going to be better. The veins, the the arteries, the lymphatic vessels, all of that is going to be in a better position. Plus the energy of the body itself, the meridians in acupuncture are going to to also align up better because there's no twisting or misfunction of the structure. So keep practicing it, keep bringing it in, and then there's a psychological and emotional part that'll come with this as you begin to, to present yourself in a much more open, positive, and commanding way. You just feel better about your whole energy and who you are. Thank you. <laughs>